Today, we're going to unbag and take a look at Salem Church, east of Chancellorville, 3 to 4 May, 1863. This is part of Decisions Games mini game series, or more specifically, the Musket and Saber series, which I have been covering this week as I've been covering the American Civil War, uh, primarily through the eyes of Decision Games and these smaller engagements or smaller portions of larger battles. Um, and I'll put a link to the um, games I've covered uh, this week uh, and, and as, as my ongoing American Civil War week. And uh, now we're up to Salem Church, and this is uh, a part of the Battle of Chancellorville that took place on, it looks like here on the third and fourth day. Um, if we all recall, the first day was more of a, a meeting engagement, and the second day was uh, Stonewall Jackson's major flanking maneuver. And then by the time we get to the third day, a lot of the action is focused around Chancellorville proper. However, this was uh, a Union, uh, I believe a Union attempt at a flanking maneuver, uh, and um, having it be you know, stopped by the Confederates at uh, Salem Church. So uh, if you've looked at my other videos on the Musket and Saber series, there's I've got a whole playlist on those. But on these uh, American Civil War, you know, biopics, you know, these smaller pieces, uh, what these games really allow for you to do is the rule system is relatively straightforward and simple, uh, straight up movement, hex encounter, combat results table, uh, and and with some leaders and uh, special rules, you know, for mounted and cavalry, stuff like that, mounted and um, uh, artillery and stuff like that. Um, so not a large investment in time on the rules. The rules are about five pages plus charts, and then you get some special rules for the specific scenarios or the specific games. And then uh, it's not a, not a very large footprint either. The maps are relatively uh, self-contained. I mean, they're, they're relatively small. Uh, for uh, for the engagement and the counter sheet is not or the counter density is very small as well so it all fits into one of these nice little bags and are very playable now do they have all the glitz and the chrome and the crunch and the the detail that you want for uh, a game a, a war game you know maybe not um, these are more introductory or more high level or more uh, to give you a feel for the conflict and what was involved and give you a sense of some of the decisions as opposed to give you the real in-depth simulation, but, you know, each to their own. Here is an example of the map, which we'll see when we pull this out of the bag. Example of the counters, both leaders and regular units. Uh, and then, you know, it's two players, uh, brigade level, hell, uh, hex scale is 352 yards, Playing time is one to two hours. Complexity is very low, and solitaire suitability is very high. It doesn't have a solitaire uh, rule set in it. it it's just playing it two-handed. There's really no hidden information. So what you see is what you get, and what you see is what you can shoot at, that kind of stuff. All right, pull this out there. Whoop. And see if there's anything left in the bag. I doubt it, but you always got to check. Okay. Then we have the counters. You have a bag, which uh, the counters will fit. All these counters will fit in that bag easily. Here are the counters. As you can see here, we have a turn counter and some leaders. And then your different units there. And you have some administrative uh, markers to mark stuff. Looks like you got a supply marker there, too. And they're double-sided. And they're typical decision game type counters. They're kind of, they're not super thick and they do come out with nibs. So if you're a clipper, then you'll clip, you'll clip no matter what. If you're not a clipper, you still might want to clip these with uh, the nibs. And I have to go back and clip all my decision games. And uh, that's a lot. That's a very daunting task. So there's your counters. Um, you get the rule set here. Let's look at the... And this is a little. This is an older version. The newer ones have a, a the paper is like normal paper. This is uh, a little bit glossy, and uh, 
So the way they set this up, the, 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 the standard revised rules are like five pages with a chart on the back. These are four pages with no charts, and I imagine the chart must be in the specific rules for the scenario. Yeah, there's the, there's the combat's results table. And uh, there's no bombardment chart, which there normally is in the other rules. So here's your combat's results table. Here's your terrain effects chart. So you got like two pages of rules for the specific scenario, which is mainly set up and victory conditions. And then you have some extra rules for like the Union train here. That's that supply marker we were took a look at. And then your there's a special way of how initiative is determined for this, it looks like. And there's also a knight turn here as well. And some designer notes in an order of battle. So that's the specific rules. And here are the um, system rules, which I think have been updated a little bit. But it's a, a triple column and then you, with really no illustrations other than you got a little bit of an explanation of the counters themselves, combat factor, morale factor, movement. And morale is important in this because that will determine... Uh, you know, battle effects and uh, like disruption. So you got your movement, you've got uh, combat, you've got artillery, uh, cavalry, you've got zones of control here, you have leaders, and then you have disruption and recovery. That's the, the, the administrative marker we saw there. You can see that there. And that is it. That is it for the game. So that is the rules. Again, not very much of an investment there. And if you've played the system, one reason why I like these games is once you've played the system a few times or a few different of the games, um, you know how it plays. I mean, it's you, you know how movement and, and uh, combat and all that fun stuff works. And, you know, it's, it's really relatively basic for... Uh, for war games, so it's uh, it, it's kind of second nature for anybody who's played uh, a fair amount of war games. You've got your turn track here. There's a lot of turns, like there's 14 turns there. Then we have our terrain key on here, the one in color, and then you have all the different terrain. Here is Salem Church right here. And then we have uh, Banks Ford. So we have this river going all along the side here, and, and a lot of this action takes place just... Uh, uh, is there a compass rose on here? But I think the orientation is... As normally we'd see it kind of like this on, on the... Uh, north. Yeah, there's... North is that way. So it'd be like this. It's orientation. So you got the river up north, and then... The major uh, orange, uh, what is it called? The Orange Plank Road. One of the major roads here where uh, Salem Church sits at. So the Union should be coming this way and then the Confederate forces are, are holding up here pretty much. I would believe that's how it plays out. So there you have it. That is what you get in a bag of uh, Salem Church east of Chancellor Vale. Uh, as I continue on with my uh, coverage of the that bag is kind of sticking up there, um, the mini game series from Decision Games, uh, focusing on the musket and saber and uh, system and the U.S. Civil War. So if you've played this game, love to know your thoughts on it. If you've played any in the series, love to know your thoughts on that. Do, do you like the system? Is it too basic? And not enough crunch, or is it uh, is it a good uh, kind of filler game if you only have a part of an evening and you just want to uh, you know get a feel for this aspect of the Battle of Chancellorville? Then then maybe this is your game. Anyway, love to know your thoughts. Leave uh, leave them down below, and I hope you're having a good one. Take care.
Thanks for watching.